Change has always been a subject of great mystery to me. To some, change is a scary, unsettling word, yet to others, it's new beginnings and a total rush. But then it's not every day you're presented with the opportunity to try the new, to vie you left than right, to chart a new, unexplored waters, we simply go into autopilot and, well, repeat. However, from time to time it's nice to break that cycle and, well, change. Fishing has always been in my blood since I was a young sprat. However, I've always fancied hunting that prized wild river monster, the pike, but I've always kind of shied away from the experience. I've only ever caught one pike, and that was from a lake in Boreham back in the day when I thought being a lumberjack was cool. It was a big upper double, and to this day I still remember the battle. So without any hesitation, I picked up the phone, pulled a few strings and Bob's your uncle, or your auntie depending on which way you sail, and I booked it. And as you can probably guess, I'm really looking forward to this one. Well, we're finally here. It's early December. The weather conditions aren't looking great, but hey, you can't have everything, can you? So this weekend, we're going to start our mission on the beautiful Billingford Lakes in Norfolk, where we're going to be doing a 24-hour pike tutorial with this guy, Robbie Northman. Along with being an accomplished angling guide, Robbie's also part of the Savage Pro team, which means he's going to catch lots of fish, right? So, yeah. Now, you're going to have to bear with me on this one, but I am learning from scratch. That's everything from how to cast, where to cast, how to retrieve my lures out of trees, you know, that sort of stuff, you know. This is all new to me, and I'm going to be like a sponge and absorb as much as I can. Now, after a few short blunders, I think I managed to pass this with flying colours. No lures were harmed in the making of this section. Well, it's, uh, it's a lot more exciting than carp fishing. Whoa. Whoa there. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's probably not the best way to, ex to express that, really. I think um, it's active, isn't it? I think cause, because you're doing something, it's almost like watching a float. You're, you're, you know, hunting with carp fishing, you're sitting behind the rods and you'll move and you'll, you know, obviously be watching the water, but with pike, um, you know, even though we've just pretty much started, I can feel that, that energy, that different level of energy in this. Um, and the casting itself is actually, it's actually really easy. But I think it, with this kind of weight that I'm using now, that's quite a big lure, the, um, you know, trying to get accurate into these gaps. It seems to be fairly straightforward, really, he says, as he casts it into a tree. <laughs> um, but yeah, with this kind of size, you, you, you feel a bit like you've got like a, a two, three ounce lead that you can just pop into a, into a corner. And also because you're using braid as well, 
it, it flows a lot easier through the rings and the eyes and um, yeah that's nice it just feels nice that you're actually hunting you're doing something hunting's the right word to use here and we end up moving quite a lot So with the casting of the bag and a bit of background knowledge on how to set a hook, we move on to the approach. And hopefully Robbie's going to tell me where to put these boilies. I mean, lures. Lures. This looks very, um, I can't say carpy, can I? Uh, it's fishy. <laughs> fishy. fishy. Yeah. It's, um, it's tucked away in here. Um, it's only a tiny swim, so I think um, one of us will fish. Um, do you want to go in and Yeah, yeah, go cool, cool. So what, um, what looks good here then? You've obviously got the snags and the trees overhanging here. Which is yeah, nice. there's a lot of um, lot of bankside feature. Um, it's quite calm and out of the wind, so there could be some silverfish holding up here. Hopefully, um, hopefully a few pike around them. But it's, it's shallow. It's uh, another shallow area of the lake, not quite as weedy as um, where we started. Yeah. So we'll give it we'll give it a quick ten minutes and yeah, see, yeah. If, um, see if there's anything about. Cool. Let's start on the left side. Yep. Um, and we'll do about eight casts, breaking the swim down into segments. Yep. And when you think about it, you're spending you know, 40 seconds to a minute on each cast, so we get our 10 minutes working the swim quite, quite easily, just breaking it down like that. So if, if you do your first one in that nice bay, yeah, I know it's deeper there, so we'll count that down. One, two, three, and start your retrieve now. Now, when you get about halfway back, give it a bit of a flick and lift and wind just slightly faster because um, you'll be coming over some, some weed about there. Robbie's advice seems very logical. You know, when you first arrive at a swim with this much water in front of you, it can be quite daunting. But breaking it up into smaller segments well, just makes your life a lot easier. We also get the first sniff of a pike, but it doesn't seem like he's that interested. So we're moving on. So with the basics all sorted, I feel quite confident about going into day two. We're going to stay on Billingford Lakes tonight, just to make it easier travelling for tomorrow. With the winter light fading very quickly, and the temperature dropping slightly, I think it's time to get the bivvy out and maybe get the cart rods out whilst we're here. Be silly not to. But I think Robbie's got other plans. Where are you off to, you sneaky devil? Super slow day. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> Straight away. Look at that. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, yo, stealth. I'm gonna steal this swim all for myself. Um, tactic pays off. Oh, in the net. Get in that net. That was the first cast, just a little move. Um, it's actually on a lure from Savage that I haven't even tried yet. It's a new pulse tail. So, <laughs> I'll just rest this up and I'll grab the unhooking mat and give you a closer look. There we go. Right, let's give you a closer look at this one. Well, I said it was a small fish, but I was totally wrong. It's not, not a small fish at all. It's actually a very nice, beautiful gravel pit pike. There we go. <laughs> what a little stunner. Beautiful, beautiful dark colours on these pike in here. Fantastic looking fish. That truly is a fantastic looking fish. What a stunner. Well done, mate. Look at the colours on the back there. And the traditional autumn leaf, of course. 
I'd be a bit nervous about picking that up though. The size of his teeth. <laughs> a lot of people are afraid of pike because they're toothy. But you can quite safely handle them. There's a flap there, you just run your hand in. And you've got to be careful not to damage that soft membrane. There's a lovely bony ridge there that you can just lay your fingers against and pick her up. And away you go. From that position, you can straddle the fish and open its mouth quite safely. And that'll give you really good access with your pliers to the hooks, anything you need to get out of there without damaging the fish. Right, let's slip this one back. Wow, stunning, stunning fish, mate. Great capture. Are you happy about that? On the pog staff. Mm, I think it's pretty happy. Anyway, looking forward to tomorrow. Bring it on. Well, good morning all and welcome to day two. Did you check out that beautiful sunrise? Oh. It was an extremely windy night last night. There was one point I thought John was gonna take off or it was just him snoring one or the other. Nevertheless, there was no action off the cart rods and it looks like the rest of the lake was very quiet too. Met officer reporting showers this afternoon, but a nice bright morning to start. So let's get this van sorted, get on the road, and get to our next destination. Norfolk is an absolutely beautiful place to visit. If you've never been there before, go check it out. But today we're flying over the border to Cambridgeshire where we're going to meet Robbie for our second location and we're going to definitely catch a fish or two. Don't you think? Use the force, Simon. Now, you're probably not going to feel this, but we are at DEF CON 1 on the excitement level as we all arrive safe and sound at our second destination, the beautiful town of Benick in the heart of the Fenland district. And so all we need to do now is just add fish. Easy, right? We're going to start the morning off with a little light drop shotting just underneath this bridge. It really is beautiful here. Once we've warmed up on the small perch, we'll head down river. Today we're fishing the beautiful River Neen. It's a hundred miles long and is the tenth longest river in the country. There's some wonderful fishing to be had on the Neen, and species include roach, perch, carp, tench, bream, and of course, the fish that we're after today, the pike. I am really buzzing to be here. I mean, obviously I'd love to catch a fish, but it is an absolutely stunning place to be. You can 
conditions wise, well, they're not the best. It's a very bright day and the water is fairly clear, but I'm hoping that if the rain does come in this afternoon, it'll murk it up a bit and we'll get some cover. However, as the legendary jazz singer George Benson once sang, never give up on a good thing. Got to follow. Have you, have you got to follow? Yeah, here. Is it a big one? Yeah, well, it's a fairly decent one. Um, let me sneak up and bring the smaller shad to you. Try this. That's a good fish. What, just take this one out? Yeah. Slowly. Yeah, keep your movements nice and small. Just bounce that around him. Don't smash it in too hard, just... Yep, flick it. Flick it. Well, as much as I flicked, that fish was having none of it. Thanks a lot, George Benson, you so with conditions as they are and the pike not playing ball, it's a great opportunity to sit Robbie down and talk about his box. Now that doesn't sound right, does it? Right mate, so what have we got here then? What have we been using? Um, well, this is my little breaker box of pike lures. So um, I've, I've um, taken a few that I thought would be likely in the conditions out. So we've got, got some new ones. Um, this is like a rig your own pulse style trout. Right. Um, that's got a very big fat tail on it, which, which sort of pulses away in the water. Yep. Um, good for drawing fish in. Um, we've got a few different variants on paddle tails, like these gobies. We've got some, some smaller cannibal shads. Yep. Uh, some little rattle trouts. Um, oh. they're, they're great for just sort of twitching along and um, search, searching the water column. Yes. Um, yep. And we've got some tail baits, um, which you had to follow on yeah. the, um, the burbots. Yeah. These, these things just, they really work themselves. That big long tail just sort of pulsates as you bring it in slow and steady. Yeah, they're amazing, aren't they, these things? Blimey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, amazing um, colours. <laughs> so this is, this, is this, this is just pike, isn't it? This yeah, stuff. just pike in that, that box. Yeah. Um, Whereas um, later on we might we might get a bit of perch or, or even some sander kit out being being in the fens. Yeah. So do you get a lot of damage on these lures as well? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, battle scars are the sign of a well used lure. See, most <laughs> of these in here are brand new and um, haven't quite had the um, had yeah. the chance to be destroyed yet. But yeah. I'm sure. Oh, there we go. There's there's one with um, with a fair bit of tearing oh, in yeah. the back of it. They, they hold up pretty well. Yeah. Um, can you repair them as well? Though? You can. You can use um, like a hot knife or, um, or a specific type of glue to fix a lot of these um, soft plastic glues. Yeah. So you do get a bit of life out of them. Now it might seem a bit of a minefield this, but once you understand what each of these lures does, you only need a couple of each to get yourself going. We're heading back to the cars to pick up our lunch but it would seem that the Met Office is spot on. There's a distant rumble of thunder and I can definitely feel that change in the atmosphere. From blue to grey. Never have I wanted rain more than I do now. finish up our lunch and we get back to the fishing. Robbie's adamant that the fish will change their behaviour now there's a bit more colour in the water. And he's not wrong, as I lose a fish within about five seconds of casting out, which is a shame but you know, these things happen. It seems that I hadn't set the hook right. These pike have got very bony mouths so I need to give it a bit more welly on the strike. basically making our way down river. We're doing 10 or 12 casts in each swim and then we move on. We we're actually having quite positive knocks and actually seeing a few as well. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, this happens. Robbie's in again. It was only a matter of time before somebody snagged one 
and it looks like a fairly decent fish. And there we go, another beast in the net. That's awesome. Wow, what an achievement. That is one gorgeous fish. Look at the colour of that. They're much greener than the ones from the lake. The detail, the carving on it, oh, that's awesome. Well done, mate. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Catching fish is a wonderful experience, but actually capturing people catching fish is an awesome experience. Seeing them smile and come to life and, well, just enjoying that moment is such a privilege. Well done, mate. <laughs> yes. Change can be a bitter pill to swallow, I guess. the sound of my first solo follow and yes it did scare the shit out of me so I ventured out on my own today I'm Solo, Han Solo, that's what I am. I've fallen in love. I've fallen in love with the idea of hunting for wild fish, for walking these wild banks. This is a piece of me. This is all the wildlife that I could ever want. This is fishing, this is vision, this is life. This is a new romance. It's not carp fishing. And as much as I love carp fishing, and I'll always be a carp fisherman, this is a different kettle of fish. Excuse the pun. Now I know this sounds all a bit wishy-washy, but to be honest with you, I don't care. I found a new way to do what I love doing, and that's being at one with nature and going fishing. And that's what I'm gonna do.
So I guess this comes back to that word of change, you know, changing your vision, changing your outlook, you know, whether that's self-development or the appreciation for the environment, change to me is a positive thing. And so, will these changes catch me more fish, I hear you asking? And the answer to that is... Hell yeah. It's not my fault You've been lying, saying that I took away your peace Drowning by yourself, now you want to blame me Oh, hello there. Um, right, Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you're all very well in this crazy COVID world. Um, I know 2020 has been a really mad, mad place to be. But for me, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. I've actually found my fishing and, you know, rediscovered my love of doing the filming and the vlogging. And really, that's all down to you. So I want to say a big thank you to everybody for supporting, subscribing, all the feedback. It's been fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to 2021. Hopefully, once we get rid of this pandemic rubbish, we can move forward and I can do some new vlogs with you, do some new adventures, go on some new angling holidays and then lots of wildlife and all that sort of stuff. So again, thank you so much for your support and I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Take care and Merry Christmas.